It's the one and only beast day. You gotta stay woke. Stay woke. Stay woke. Questioning brings about understanding. And understanding brings about knowledge. It's the one and only beast day. Test B if you're dyslexic. Got a heart made of gold and a smile big as touch. It's the one and only beast day. You gotta stay woke. Stay woke, stay woke. Questioning brings about understanding. And understanding brings about knowledge. It's the one and only beast day. Test B if you're dyslexic. Got a heart made of gold and a smile big as touch. So man, I was in I was in Walmart last night. Yeah. And uh and this dude was like on one of you know them little scooters that they have in the front. <laughs> yeah. Man. What the boy is that? Like really it's supposed to be handicapped people, but just the fat people drive around. Right, right, yeah. right. Uh hover around for lazy motherfuckers. <laughs> Yeah, you never see no handicapped people on. So look, man, you know mm-hmm. I still go to the grocery store like at night and shit. Yeah, like, me too. Like I'm on some college shit. Yeah. Man, I saw this dude get on the little little <laughs> scooter, and he riding around like this nigga fall asleep <laughs> and knock all the bread off. <laughs> I'm talking about the bread fucked up, man. <laughs> and uh, I, I mean, I'm weak because he he hit like a quick move. And his head turned the wheel into all the bread. Yeah. And I was going to go over and tell him, you know, stay woke. <laughs> but uh, it was too late by that point, you know what I'm saying? Plus, you know, he he didn't hit these, Eng- you know, I was in there, in there for some English muffins. Yeah. So I saved 30% on them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> So you won't stay broke, huh? Right, right. So stay stay sleep so I can stay <laughs> stay uh rich, you know what I'm saying? So uh anyway, man, uh <laughs> that was crazy cuz like the whole time, like all yesterday was crazy, man, cuz all I kept thinking for some reason I kept thinking about Bill Cosby, you know, just coming off that uh that Raven Simone stuff. Yeah. And uh and I was like, you know, this what happened when they lock up the uh the thought leaders unfortunately <laughs> he was a thought leader you know what i'm saying and i would rather have him speak on political issues than ti <laughs> yeah you know what i'm saying like my motherfucker's gonna be mad at ti man how like, they gonna be mad at ti i mean like ti thought how you gonna even consider what he said he thought tiny was cute man yeah, T. I thought Iggy Azalea had talent, man. Well, you know, he. I guess he was. T. I thought he could beat up Floyd Mayweather, man. He thought How he the could. Fuck, run, you gonna take whatever he says serious? He thought he could ride through the streets with all the guns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he gonna he gonna speak on that, mm-hmm. but was he wrong though? What? That is, <laughs> that, oh, that he wouldn't vote for a woman because they think with emotion. Right. Like. Is it, is that is that too is that too deep? Yeah, that's too deep, man. Cause it's like I'm not about to sit here and about to dissect the musings, right? Of of <laughs> of a nigga. <laughs> but no, nah, man. Um, uh, I thought uh, you know. I mean, we can learn a lot from a, from a woman, but I don't know if I want to vote for Hillary though, Mike. Yeah, I don't know if I want to vote for Hillary either. Man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd rather vote for. Um, what was the chick name in 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 Atlanta that had the had the natural? Uh, that they like she ain't had no makeup on. They ain't let her in the in. The, so like she was a representative. I don't know. Oh, you from Atlanta? Yeah. Well, I don't know if she was from Atlanta. No, you talking was, about uh, McKinney? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Remember they they wouldn't let her in the floor because she ain't had no makeup on. Yeah. They thought she was just Cynthia McKinney. Yeah, Cynthia McKinney. Yeah. No. You know they named the street out there in, in Atlanta. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was a, uh, you know, I was I was watching the debates. Um, I was going back and forth between that and you know what, man. I had to get my ignorant nigga on. I had to satisfy that and watch yeah. BT. So you had to uh, 
the ignorant motherfuckers shucking and jiving, trying to get people to watch them, and you had the BET Awards. And- <laughs> <laughs> hey, cause they shucked and jive. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I mean, did you see Buddy with the um? Was was Buddy with the long neck? Lincoln Chaffee. Link- yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. like he should give Jim Webb some of his neck. Yeah, man, cause Jim Webb <laughs> tied no that nigga there. He tied that shit extra tight. Jim uh, Lincoln Chaffee was about to cry, man. <laughs> They asked him about that vote, and he was like, well, you know, it was my first week in the office, and my daddy had died, and Anderson Cooper was like, well, that's an excuse for you not researching your vote. He was like, but, Anderson, you're being kind of hard, man, because I told you my daddy had died, and then it was my first week. <laughs> I was like, man, Lincoln Chaffee going to cry when he get in the car. Yeah, man, Lincoln Chaffee reminded me of that dude who used to be on DuckTales. That were, uh, he was like the science dude, and then he was, uh, he'll jump in the little motorized See, I scooter. Didn't, I didn't really watch. Didn't things. grow up I'm, on that. I'm, 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 I'm a little bit older than you, if you didn't know. Um. <laughs> All right, he can Well, what you watch? Tom and Jerry. Yeah, I watched Tom and Jerry. I watched. I watched. Uh, what was I the used, old? Car- what you? What cartoon? Let me tell you. Like? Don't Bernie Sanders look just like the Arvark on the Pink Panther man? He talked the like Arv- him and everything. Man, you know, every time I look at Bernie Sanders, I think about. Uh, my man from Curb Your Enthusiasm, yeah, Larry he David. Act, yeah. He looked just like Larry he David. He act like Larry David. He act David. like him too, man. <laughs> Shout out to Larry. But not nah, yeah, he do he do kinda look like uh And he talked like the Pink, Pink. You know, the only thing, um I ain't seen Pink Panther in so long, I'm like, I ain't gonna lie, man. Uh I, I was gonna try to float through it, but um, <laughs> I don't know if I remember. Yeah, and it wasn't even the Pink Panther. <laughs> it was one of the ancillary cartoons that the Pink Panther that was on the Pink Panther, man, but you know. Yeah. Uh but did you? Um, but what's what's my man named Jim Webb? I mean, like they gave like a little simple answer. They was like, you know, so who who is your enemy? I mean, like that was kind of yeah. a silly question, yeah, yeah. man. But but he gonna stand to the camera and was like, <laughs> the guy I killed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, Jim Webb crazy. Get, he had crazy kind of crazy. Where they get this motherfucker from? <laughs> Man, that dude. Um, he was mad because he was mad the whole time. Jim Webb might kill Anderson Cooper, man. Shoot, I ain't, yeah. Jim Webb, he was complaining about him not getting enough time. You gave everybody else time. But anyway, and Anderson Cooper was like, well, hurry up with your answer, man. You wasting half your time now complaining about you don't have enough time. Yeah, see, his his tag like, was was being very restrictive to his words getting out. Yeah. He didn't have enough uh, water flowing to his brain, mm-hmm. you know. So, uh I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I I'm rooting for uh, I'm rooting for Bernie Sanders. Yeah, uh, man. When I start, first started saying I was gonna vote for Bernie Sanders, they said I was throwing my vote away. But now everybody wants to vote for him. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Killer Mike led that charge, mm-hmm. in in a way, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I always kind of peeped this game from afar, like like you just said. But you know, he kind of went. I don't know. It's like. <laughs> Killer Mike did the opposite of what T.I. did. <laughs> yeah. so, Killer Mike is the opposite of T.I. Of, of T. Yeah, when you think about it, because, uh, uh, um, you know, T.I., like you said, man, he don't make, like, real good decisions. Right. And uh, damn, but the, the crazy thing is he can't vote. So, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, why, why are they even uh, trying to talk to him? That ain't why you ain't voting for Hillary Clinton. Huh? I say that's not why you ain't voting for Hillary Clinton because she's a woman. No, you ain't vote for Hillary Clinton because you can't vote. Right, right. You know. Uh, but, you know, what about Hillary, though, Mike? Like, she she did the nay-nay with the black folks. Here's, here's the thing I keep saying about she Hillary. She shucked and jive for our if, vote. if Hillary is elected as president... I wouldn't be mad because I think Hillary Clinton might make a good president. Because her and Bill, see, people don't know the whole Hillary and Bill story, man. Hillary and Bill might, they are more ruthless than the Bushes when you look at their history, right? I know, man. I mean, hey. They, they I mean. What happened in Haiti? Yeah. What's up with them contracts, player? Yeah, but, but uh, you know, they say they uh, they uh, killed our frat brother. Uh, but um, Yeah. But what makes Hillary... See, Hillary is a bad candidate, but she will probably be a good president because she's cutthroat. She know how to get shit done. I, don't, I mean, 
I don't know about that, Mike, because... She just look, ain't charismatic, man. Like, you know, we using, like, somebody with a little bit of swag, like Obama or Bush, like, you know, the dumb dude you'd like to have a beer with. Uh, you know, even even Clinton had a little swag to him. All right, so let, let me ask you this. What, what would you want to do with Hillary Clinton? What? I mean, like, is she somebody that you would... Like go bowling with Nah uh, this, Let me tell you who here to the, to the poetry spot Nah This is what she you She don't look like She know how to have fun like. Nah This is what you do With Hillary Clinton man You make friends With Hillary Clinton When you're in the Ninth grade mm-hmm. And all through high school You be in her study group You sit beside her in class So you can cheat off her paper <laughs> <laughs> And then what She grow up And be like hey don't give him a job. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> he copied off my paper. <laughs> no, nah, man. Like, Hillary, uh, you know, um, Bernie jumped in. Like, I think that was a smooth move how he jumped in and said we were tired of the emails. But the truth is, I'm tired of them lying about the emails. You know what I'm saying? Because at first, I had moved on. I, I ain't going to lie. I, I did move on. But then, like, some little sound bites or, like, little simple shit just started jumping in. And uh, it was drawing my attention. It drew me back in. And so I'm like, like, is this something I need to stay woke on? You know? And then you think about, like, how all of that tie into, um, you know, how the Obama administration been overthrowing governments across the world. And then now they, they caught over in Syria, like, literally, like, on some bullshit. Like, they literally got caught with their hand in the cookie jar. Hey, man. They was over there funding them ISIS dudes. Yeah, but see, and Russia came in and was like, "Hey, well you, you, if you're trying to get rid of ISIS, we are too." See, people don't like. I, this is what the thing we need to stay walk on. Woke on. World War Three is about to start in fucking Syria. Like it's about to be Russia versus the United States because like the U.S. on one side mm-hmm. and Russia is on the other side, and apparently Russia. It looks like to be on the right side. They look like the good guy. Yeah, yeah on some real shit. Like, my, like, cause you know, if it was any other time and it was any other situation, everybody would be rushing to the U.S. side. Be like, right. You know, uh, Russia does not. Don't do that. Don't do that. Right. Like everybody staying out of that shit because Russia looks to be on the right side. I mean, you know, it's even worse, man. Because I was looking, I was looking online today. They about to bring. A um, like a, a ISIS general or something over to a naval hospital in Bethesda, Maryland. Like they're trying to debate on whether or not to bring that dude in. And I'm like, like, how is this okay? Like, how you done made ISIS like this big bad, uh, big bad Billy Goat Gruff? You know what I'm saying? And like now, you know, you 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 eating center buns with the nigga? Well, see, you know, man, like. I mean, we know what time it is. Yeah, we watched that fucking CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, like network um, corporate news over here. We don't really know what's going on because we don't mm-hmm. read from sources outside of the U.S. or outside the corporate media. So we don't really know the in- intricacies of what's really going on over there. So the rest of the world is up on game, and we're not. I know. I mean, and I'm sitting there trying to tell my uncle about it because my uncle is like that hard. You know, he one of them black people that just support Obama without questioning any mm-hmm. of his moves. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got to question everything. Right. And he around there telling me it don't matter what's going on over there. I was like, all right, motherfucker. When it, <laughs> yeah, we about when to get me World War Three. we're going to see how much it matter. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, I mean, like, I don't see because, you know, we, we didn't live through... Uh, World War Two or World War One, and I, I, for the most part, I was young during like uh, you know the uh, Saddam Hussein wars and shit like that, Iraq War. I was I was politically conscious enough at the time that we went into Afghanistan mm. to know that they were gonna go in there and raid those poppy fields, yeah, and come back to America, and now we got like. A heroin situation out here. Yeah, why you think Oxycontin so cheap? Why you think heroin is taking over? Oh, cause yeah, right, right. I mean, like, there are videos 
on like we never like we watch fights on world star hip hop. Right. Right. But we won't watch the videos gotta have a balance. that are online <laughs> that people have taken of U.S. soldiers standing around guarding poppy fields right. in Afghanistan. Now nah, that shit ain't no world star hip hop. No, nah, you ain't you ain't gonna see that, man. You got to go to uh, world star uncut, uncut. Al you know Jazeera star hip hop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, that's why that's why I guess um, what what took place in um, in D.C. this weekend was so important. I mean, yeah, you, man. you was able to make it up there. Yeah, uh, I was. Um, I, I was that man, man. Okay, I got. I'm glad I was surprised that as many people came out mm -hmm. because, like, you weren't hearing, a, you wasn't hearing about it on the mainstream media like right. you were. See, I was at the first Million Man March. Okay, I was. Uh, so I, I it, there wasn't as many people there, mm -hmm. but it was because like the first Million Man March, like every black leader, every black person, like it was their, they felt like it was their duty to be there. Right, and I guess. The people who were there this year, it was you know, there's a different kind of media now. It's yeah, it was media. a different, different energy, whole different. Energy. Yeah, and it was a more, like it wasn't as many people, but it was a more focused energy. Like you know, everybody was there in the past when I went in '95 for different reasons. Like there were some people there for just unity, some people there for the poverty situation. But now we. It was kind of like a focused. Uh, we were they were kind of focused on justice, mm -hmm. but Farrakhan did have like the the people who were speaking were like all Farrakhan's handpicked people. So it was like very Nation of Islam centric, mm -hmm. and it was some kooks on stage too, man. I mean, mm -hmm. he had some, you know, you know, some. I heard him like well, I got a chance to watch it on on YouTube, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I got to go back and like really just kind of. Uh, ingratiate myself with it, but uh, I heard him like when he started, how like whoever was before him, he he cut him short, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, what just, time? What time did, did you get out there? I got out there about ten, about ten. And mm -hmm. so, when did Farrakhan come on? <sighs> Farrakhan, I think Farrakhan came on about one or two. Mm -hmm. He spoke for like two and a half hours. Yeah, I saw, like, I saw that. Like when he came on, I was surprised because when at the first one, like you know, it was a long list all day of leaders, and then Farrakhan spoke at the end. Mm -hmm. Like he was, like how, you know, to come on right around, right after noon, I was like, dang, you know, it's gonna be. But it wasn't. It wasn't as long as the, the last one. But he spoke for a long time. Mm -hmm. What now? Uh, how how did his speech this year? Uh, uh, differ from the one 20 years ago I think it was 20 years ago he didn't get to go on and on so this was a little bit more rambling but it was more comprehensive too he talked about history but then he talked about you know he he had a lot of yeah I saw him be like very transparent like even even with the Malcolm X mm -hmm. uh, conspiracy right he, um, I think I think this this like I think Farrakhan, this was Farrakhan's, maybe, not maybe his exit, but like, you know, when you have a 75th birthday party for your grandparents and you having it really because you know they not going to be around soon yeah. and this might be the last chance for the family to get around them. Yeah. Like, that's what this was, I think, for Farrakhan. Yeah, I could tell it was kind of like a, like a swan song yeah. almost because yeah. uh, when... Uh, there was one part that particularly stood out to me when he revealed like he was 83 mm -hmm. and you know we really he was th talking about how we had to really um, capitalize on on this youthful energy mm -hmm. that's coming up and I noticed man even even with you know what's going on in our uh, like community. Like you never, yeah. I ne I never heard him talk about Malcolm before. Or, yeah, never. Like he's heard very, him, yeah. very, and he's always usually very condemning. But he seemed like accepting of Christians and. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he had ministers mm -hmm. that like, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, I just noticed with people with people like uh, Farrakhan is like he's the last of a generation. Just like he was saying, like there there aren't that many bold speakers left. Right. And you got to think about this, right? Even when you talk about Malcolm and Martin and all the black leaders we've had, no matter how you feel about Farrakhan, 
whether you like him or hate him, you gotta admit, like, who else has lived that long mm-hmm. that has touched that many people's lives? Like, he turned a lot of around a lot of lives mm-hmm. that would have been like lost. Mm-hmm. Like, as far as black men in prison, black men all over the country who were like, you might not agree with even with the Nation of Islam and their, but he has made productive members of society in out of people who have fallen into the cracks. Now, now, what was, now this is what I, I miss, Mike, because what was the controversy that everybody, okay, so I, I wasn't there, but all I know was all on social media, everybody was complaining about, you know, new major news coverage not touching on it. And I'm like, why are we going, why, why are we complaining about the same devil that, yeah. you know what I'm saying, that has oppressed us? Like, why are we crying out to this dude? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like we're trying to lift him up while making that the most important thing coming out of the media. Like, I didn't I didn't yeah. understand yeah, that. I don't. Well, I guess, uh, well, one, for a, a lot of us, man, that's still where we get our news. True. Like, True. motherfuckers complaining about, like, why was it? BET didn't even cover it. What the fuck? You still watch BET? Right, right, right. You right. know? Um, Man, if y'all ain't paid your cable bill. Yeah. <laughs> like, you will get mad at how NBC portrays, like, will go through Trayvon Martin's Facebook photos and find the most evil one mm-hmm. and show him in that light or any other news major news media outlet, right? You don't want, like, why the fuck would you want them there? And why would the fuck would you want to read or hear about the Million Man March from those people? Right. I mean, like, it, it's people, I mean, I, I saw all kind of crazy stuff. I started seeing, seeing uh, you, all, you all didn't accomplish anything because you took a white man's airline up there. You know, like, silly shit like yeah, that. Yeah, man, see, see, it's, I got to go back to my, my, this phrase, man. There's a lot of bitter bitches in the world. And when I say bitches, I don't mean women. I mean bitches. Men bitches. Women bitches. I mean bitter bitches. And Mm -hmm. and part of bitter bitches is, like, I bet you when Rosa Parks stopped during the Montgomery boycott, Mm -hmm. you know, I bet you with some bitter bitches saying now i got it gonna take me two hours to get to work all because of this motherfucker want to ride on the, like you still on the bus you know what i'm saying i stayed in my seat too ain't no yeah. niggas came with no cameras for me yeah <laughs> you know i bet you it was some uh some people in selma saying what walking across that bridge gonna do that ain't gonna get it like they got some voting registration forms on the other side of that bridge you know what i'm saying yeah. it's always some bitter bitches man, you know it's funny man boondocks did an episode specifically about uh rosa parks like, yeah it was a dude uh granddad was hating on rosa yeah. parks it was kind of funny but yeah but see I that's digress. all all the motherfuckers are, are basically male and female uncle and aunt ruckuses mm-hmm. like so like and, and it's a lot of those people, man. It ain't that. Sometimes a lot of them are unknowing agents for the other side, you know. Yeah, but they some, go back to the documentary. And yeah, and mm. some people are just fucking like hate is so ingrained in us, self hate that sometimes we just can't help it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because if you see somebody. Like, I can even understand the people that say, look, I don't agree with Farrakhan's agenda. I'm not going up there. I can mm. agree with those people, right? But the people that knock the people for going, like, just like and I said in the article for VSB, right? You know, there's always the option of shutting the fuck up. Mm. Like, for instance, if we're on the same football team, right? Mm-hmm. And let's say it's the fourth quarter, two, four seconds left, and the coach call a play, and we get stopped at the goal line, we don't get in. Mm-hmm. You don't go back to the locker room and when the press come in the locker room say, you know, I would have called a pass play. I would have called something else different. I don't know what coach was thinking about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You shut the fuck up because we on the same team. Right. Even if you disagree. I'm not saying that you you got to agree with the play. Right. But if we on the same team for the sake of our team and for the sake of unity and for the sake of the future, you shut the fuck up. Yeah. There is sometimes there's nothing wrong with shutting the fuck up. Yeah, man, you did real good with that article, man. Mm-hmm. Hey, this, this the dude. Uh, 
Don't that look like? Um, yeah, he does look a little bit like Bernie Sanders, man. I, no, not Bernie Sanders. I mean, uh, uh, Lincoln Chafee. Lincoln Chafee, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're looking at a picture of Gyro Gear Loose from <laughs> Duck Tail. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> That's an old school picture, man. But, you know, you it's funny, man, you bring up the, the self-hate because, you know, there's... The, the time is so unprecedented. Uh, we always hear about what uh, what our leaders did, and we we've turned um, Mal- uh, Martin Luther King into like a shiftless Negro, to where you know we think we're supposed to turn the other cheek or spit out a Bible verse mm-hmm. or you know use this kind of passive aggressive ideology to co- to combat these problems that we're facing, but. Uh, but what it does, man, it creates a lot of self-hate. It, uh, it, and, and we're not able to address accurately what we're going through. So if you got somebody that's in front of you, that's pushing you in the face, pushing you in the face, mm-hmm. and the only thing you could come up with is, you know, say a Bible verse to them. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's when the next generation comes along and say, well, I don't, I don't want to be. I don't identify as black, mm-hmm. or, uh, or I mean, like that's yeah, the kinda, cause, cause that's kind of psyche that's created, right? Because you don't want to be kind of on the side of a motherfucker that's okay with being pushed in the face, right? But on the flip side, you demonizing your folks, right? And that's where you know if a motherfucker like Raven Simone come in, exactly. I mean, she does not know the value of shutting the fuck up, right? And really though, man, we gotta, we don't know the value of changing the channel, right? You know or saying? saying, oh, that, like, I, again, back that goes back to T.I. Why will you all be considering the musings of Raven Simone? Yeah, like, why is she even relevant? I mean, this bitch don't even remember her scenes on the Cosby show. You know what I'm saying? That means that she don't even remember her cute little scenes on Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Yeah. You know, that was my shit. You know what I'm saying? She's damn near the same age. He was so unfunny to me, man. Man, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, it used to be my show, Mike. Yeah. I, I don't know, but I, I think all of those shows, man, like, uh, you know, they, they was just trying to make it on the coattails of the Cosby's. But, yeah. uh, but I mean, you know, this this girl, she gets up there, you know, she she puts herself up on a horse, uh, on, on a pedestal. And, I mean, she looking like Foghorn Leghorn, talking about people with ghetto names. Yeah. But, though, Mike, I mean, I have seen my fair share of ghetto names. But, see, the, the, what they were talking... But talk- they have jobs, though. Right. What they, what they were talking about wasn't even ghetto names. She just the, went into it. Yeah, the, stu- the study was about, tip- like, stereotypical black names, not ghetto names. They were saying, actually, the names that they used were, like, Jamal and Keisha. Mm. Which aren't really like ghetto names. Right. It's just like you know it's a black that name. That shit normal now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, she goes into Watermelon Drea. It's like like somebody asked her to do a soft shoe and she just thought, mm-hmm. man, I'm shucking hard as I can. Like, She's nah, saying, we, didn't, we didn't want you to shuck that hard. She's saying, man, Sam's. Yeah, with it. exactly. Yeah, man. Uh, that was crazy, man. So, I mean, we got to, but this is what happens, man, when. You know the the thought leaders are 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 dying off. I mean, uh, I was literally sitting there trying to think. Well, who who could command the audience like what Farrakhan did this weekend? Um, the only person I could think of that has the capability is Dr. Umar Johnson. Nah, but but he he's couldn't, he couldn't command. The yeah, audience. I mean, like, I'm saying like up and ab- coming though, Mike. Yeah, like, but if you ask the average person who he is black now black person now who he is like, oh. they went up yeah uh i mean but who but that was uh that was kind of what farrakhan was alluding to in in his speech it's like it's only so far i can really take you right now because right, i'm 83 I don't know if we like i kind of like the fact that we don't like because it's not that we are fragmented right but we don't need one motherfucker leading us by a leash I mean, I don't think it's by least, but and I, but I disagree, man. I think we are very fragmented, and just yeah, we're we're fragmented, we're fragmented. I think we're fragmented in the sense that like we have a lot of different agendas, but I think as a whole, man, we or I think we're more conscious of our place in society and the peril that we live in now than we were twenty years ago when I went to the first Million Man March. Mm. Uh. 
I mean, I, I, uh, I, I wonder how different uh, are the are the times because I was looking at a, a quote by um, by Malcolm X, and Malcolm X was saying uh, that. Uh, let me pull that quote up. He said, the Democrats are playing you for a political chump, and if you vote for them, not only are you a chump, you are a traitor to your race. Yeah. And I, I was just thinking about how, you know, in this debate, how black people had watch parties for the debate, and they just kind of glossed over the, the little Black Lives Matter. I mean, they yeah. they said enough to get the black voting base excited, but... Yeah, all, every mean, one of them said, basically... Um, yeah, they matter. And then one, what else? Yeah, one time I did this for black people, and then the next one would say, "Yeah, you remember that one time I did this?" Yeah. And then the next one would say, "Well, one time I defended a black person in trial," and the next one would say, "Well, one time I introduced a piece of le- I mean, it got voted down, but I right. Like that's basically all of these that all they said. But see, like I mean that, but that's why I hold true to my my point that like at this point, voting does not matter. Right. We we I, we've been voting for the Democrats for the last forty fifty years. And I mean, we still have, like have to beg them for shit. Yeah, I, well, two things, man. And they're not doing well, it. Well, I, I agree with you in some senses that it is not as important as we make it out to be. It is not the be all, end all. It is not the solution. Two. The second thing is you have to remember now that when Martin Luther King, I mean, when uh, Malcolm X made that statement, mm-hmm. the Democrats then were the Republicans of now. True. So, true. so he when he's talking about the Democrats, then it's like he was talking about the Republicans or not of now. He's talking about the Republicans. You know, the they, the Democrats during the '60s were the people were the people who um, were in the South, hold upholding, trying to uphold, still uphold legislation that would uh, would wouldn't would overturn. Segregation. So they didn't want the Democrats. Then didn't want segregation. They didn't want those were the uh, Dixiecrats, yeah. right? Yeah. So those Dixiecrats, when segregation came around, all of those people flipped over to the Republican Party, and which is why the Republican Party. The only reason the public Republican Party still exists now is because of the South, mm-hmm. of the former Confederate states. If it weren't for places like Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, South, South Carolina, yeah, South Carolina, then there wouldn't be no damn Republican Party because nobody don't believe in that bullshit no more. You know, I, I mean. But I, I guess like when it comes to voting, I'm saying like as a, as a, as a voting block, mm. our block does not have any power because we don't ask for anything. Like we don't. Well, I'm sorry, we don't demand anything. Right. And when. It, well, I don't think it's because we don't demand anything, and two, it becomes t- we they take it for granted because they kind of know that we wouldn't we would never go to the other side. Like they say, well, we got this, we got them in our corner. But I think that we ha- our voting block has to be specific. You know, I know you've seen that video when Black Li- when Hillary Clinton first met with Black Lives Matter, mm-hmm. and so you no, know, she's asking him so. Um, so what do you yeah, want? Yeah, what do and you want? And they're like, well, tell us about the first time you ever experienced. Yeah, no, man, no, 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 so dumb, man. Tell me what you want. Like, she was like, listen, let me tell you something. Yeah. I understand what y'all trying to do, but you got it. Like, I'm white. Like, if you want to go talk to white people, you're going to have to come to. And she was being yeah. like, that made me kind of like Hillary. Because she said, if you're going to talk to white people, you're yeah. going to have to tell them specifically this. We want this. We want this. We want this. And what we want this. She sure did that, Mike. Yeah, and, and so that's that's what I, I always say. Like, I don't give a fuck if white people like me or hate me. So, I just if they treat me with respect and equality, I don't give a damn what you feel in your heart. Cause I don't never like I assume like whenever black people are up in arms about like a they there's a recording of a white person saying nigga, I always assume that white people say nigga when they're in private anyway. Well, so it never I'm never uh well I never. Well, let me ask you this, Mike. If she came to you with that question, what would you what would you say? What? What, what would uh, what like, if she asked you like, what do you want for your community? What was and there's one thing like, what's the one thing you would you would answer? Okay, well, this is this is what I I think, right? 
and, and as far as black lives, and I'm putting it in the position of black lives matter, I think the key is limiting police interaction by stop and you, by doing that, you got to stop using poor people as a fund for the police department. Like, you know, they patrol black neighborhoods because they get those they get those tickets. You know, you saw it in the DOJ report in Ferguson. Like, mm. we are the pocketbook for small municipalities, and so they that's why they. Like they, they prey on us, right? So when they prey on us for these money, for these tickets and shit like that, the more interaction you have with, with black people, the more time opportunities you're going to have to kill one, the more opportunities you're going to have to shoot one, the more opportunities you're going to have to get in a tussle with one, to abuse one, just because they, they fuck with us more than they fuck with everybody else. So you would ask for an independent uh, judicial review of our community? And I, I don't even know if it's... If it's, I think, def- it's, it's disproportionate for us right now. Right. Like, yeah. Like you know what it is, man. And and I think this is the key. It. I mean, so, I, I, South Carolina is still a racist state, but they do one thing right, right. So their prosecutor's office mm. is, it by law and by and constitutionally, has to be funded in the same manner and with the same people as their public defender's office. Mm. So it's the same pool of people, same pool. So, like, if you're poor, you're getting the same resources that the prosecutors are getting Yeah. if you, if you use a, a public defender. Well, this is what I would do. I would demand funding for black farmers without oversight from Monsanto. Yeah, because yeah, if you, we control the food supply, mm-hmm. then we—that's the key. Yeah, that's the key to it, man. We and then, and then like do kickbacks to uh, black colleges. Well, I mean, even though I don't believe in college either, but uh, you know, black colleges to develop agriculture departments and horticulture. Because I mean, if we can't feed our people, then they yeah, don't it's, need it's, our it's, people. There's so many. There's so many things. I think one of the, the keys is that I would demand is like all predominantly black schools. I mean, kindergarten, K through 12 schools, right? Mm-hmm. Because there are numerous studies that show like the reason black kids are educated less is because blacks, if a school is predominantly black, mm-hmm. it's just worse. Mm-hmm. Like they they show like, oh, the best thing you can do for a black child, if they're in a, it's just to put is to integrate the schools. If yeah. every time they integrate school system, but you know, the but see, Dr. Johnson would say, is it's better for black students to be separated by gender, so black males in a class, black well, females but, but in a class. Well, but see, Dr. Dr. Johnson is looking at it in a vacuum. Yeah. If, in other words, like that's the whole concept of yeah, it can be separate but equal. But we know if it's separate, it ain't never gonna be equal. Right. Like if it's just all a uh, all black school, they ain't gonna never get the resources and the funding that white school. So we can't even like pretend that that shit would work. Well, all right. So if we can't get what you want, mm-hmm. and we can't get what I want, mm-hmm. we could at least get Hillary to send Stephen A. Smith to the depths of the equator or yeah you know what i'm saying let him spend some time in a in a lava pit where he just can't do nothing no more yes what the Stephen next person let me tell you i'm gonna look into the camera yes. and i'm gonna tell you you don't wanna fuck with me son i mean that shit was so i mean he sounded like uh He's, like a, I mean, some it's old like, school wwf shit. like he might as well wear tap dance shoes now man because he just cool. he's so gone man yeah he gone he is gone, Mike. He gonna challenge Kevin Durant. Yeah, but see, man, shit, Mike. I, I have, I have the solution. Kevin Durant needs to get with all the NBA players, all his friends in the NBA, and this is how you can fuck with Stephen A. Smith. Every time somebody comes into the locker room, no matter if it's Stephen A. Smith or um, Michael Wilbon, when they ask him a question, oh, I'm sorry, I don't talk to any corporation who Stephen A. Smith works for. Ooh. If they, That'd be smooth. If they start doing, if all the NBA players started doing that shit, mm-hmm. Stephen A. Smith would be out of the out of, out of the fucking lock, out of the ESPN in the locker room and out of our heads. 
Like, because you know what Stephen A. Smith is really, man, is an infiltration tool for white folks in the corporate media because they think, hey, I put this cool jive-talking dude in amongst right. the players and they're going to talk to him. They think yeah. every, they really think like black people like right. and cool with Stephen A. Smith but we and he's ain't. the conduit to like getting information. Like they just accepted that shit. Well, Stephen A. Smith, no. If, if Kevin Durant must want to go to the Lakers, if, uh, if, uh, if Stephen A. Smith said, you know, he here because he's the, he's the nigga whisperer. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, all he had to do was just say, man, I was wrong. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just, I mean, because if he was really a nigga, he wouldn't be spouting out like that. Yeah. Or he would have stood on it and not did no bitch shit like calling dude out. Man, you know he ain't finna fight this dude. Yeah. And then, you know what I'm saying? And then, like, it's this long explanation, right? Because what Kevin, Stephen A. Smith said, look, I heard from reliable sources within Kevin Durant's circle that he wants to go to L.A. Kevin Durant comes back and says, Stephen A. Smith is lying. He didn't hear that from anybody, from me or anybody that I fuck with. Because nobody that I fuck with talks to Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith comes back and said, well, you going to question me? You, he ain't never once said, look, I did talk to somebody in Kevin Durant's circle. He, he never said, like, he, he, basically he said, I remember when I used to talk to Kobe. And I remember when I used to talk to yeah. so-and-so. Like, he never addressed the fact that Kevin Durant called you a liar and you now prove that you weren't lying. He never, ever once said, yeah, I did talk to somebody in Kevin Durant's circle. He never said that. And. And I, I so here's the bigger issue though, Mike. It's the stay woke side of the game. Like, why, why is it, why, why are the Lakers so important that you know that Kevin would be considering going there? I mean, even though we've found that to be true, like I, I noticed that there are teams that they have to make up like stories for. So it's it's L. A. It's the Lakers, it's the Cowboys. And it's the Yankees. It's like I, I came home yesterday, and I'm I'm looking at ESPN, and they're on there talking about like uh, Tony Romo. What does he do in his off time? I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, man. I hope you get better. They, those 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 teams, man, are like Tony part, Romo likes Cheerios. Like they are part <laughs> of the American cultural zeitgeist, man. Like I'm a Cowboys fan, but even when you talk about the Yankees, are you a Lakers fan too? Yeah, I'm a Lakers fan too. Oh, see, Michael, you drive you you behind this. Hmm. Did Stephen A. talk to you? <laughs> Let me look into the camera and tell you something, son. Be stuck. <laughs> nah, but um, nah, man. Like a lot of like the Lakers. Like when the Cowboys are on TV, they get higher ratings than the other team. Right, right. When right. the Lakers are on TV, when they play on TV, and and it's it's partially like because there was a time when the Lakers and the Cowboys were national teams mm. and now it's just they still are because like you know i mean sons but, like what who their fathers like and, but see the, the lakers currently i mean you know magic johnson ain't walking back through their door but i mean they got a nice nucleus yeah you know but what, what I'm, saying? I'm saying is more people they, they move the needle man like they even, do move the needle like when the cowboys played the first game of the uh nfl season this year mm. that was like huge ratings Mm -hmm. Even though neither one of the teams was really shit, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. But yeah. the Cowboys moved the needle. The Lakers moved like the 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 Lakers always play on Christmas Day because they moved the needle. Like the Yankees, you know, they still move the needle, man. But see that, I mean, I, I guess I I was too young at the time, but I can imagine, you know, the media doing the same thing with Michael Jordan. And that's why I guess so many people that are not Michael Jordan fans are like diehard Dominique Wilkins fans. Like, in in a way, he was the anti-Jordan, and they were tired of hearing about Jordan. Yeah, I wasn't and, a Jordan fan, mm -hmm. but Jordan moved the needle too. Right. Jordan moved the needle like. But not see, even Jordan like was different though, man. Yeah, not like LeBron. Not like, like LeBron. Like LeBron is recognized as the best player in the league, but like even if. Like you don't turn on the TV and say, "Let me see what LeBron gonna do." Right. Like LeBron Everybody is looked watched. at. Yeah. Like LeBron is is looked at as the best player. Jordan was looked at as like Superman, like almost you know what I'm saying, like a mini Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. 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 I mean, 
man, Jordan did. Jordan did everything. Man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like he he made the game global. Yeah. You know, in a way that this LeBron, like everybody who watches basketball, they'll watch LeBron. Mm-hmm. Jordan you don't even have to watch like people don't even fucking watch sports watch jordan mm-hmm. you know that's what jordan did well one thing i can say about you know the jordan era was that it was pre kardashian craze yeah uh lebron managed to avoid the whole kardashian thing but yeah unfortunately man lamar odom was, was not they, able to yeah they got and, him man they killed him and i mean i I hate to see that brother go through it, but I mean, that dude like literally spiraled out of control yeah. after that. He fucking, I'm telling you, man, the motherfucker. Like, look at like we see Kanye going the same way, man. If you stick your dick in a Kardashian, man, Kanye was supposed to give us this album, lad. Like what? At the beginning of this year, mm. I mean, we got damn near. I mean, we almost this. We literally in 2016 right now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I mean. The election is tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The way the media hyping this shit. You know what I'm saying? But Kanye ain't gave us no album yet. Yeah. And I'm he telling you, man, Kardashian. About, uh, in-app purchases <laughs> on video games for And, kids. you know, um, like, Kim, nigga, where that album at? <laughs> Kim Kardashian is the one who started all that shit with her, with her um, video game. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And then, but now she started it in the sense that she took down Reg Bush. I mean, no, as far as saying, like the that, the game. Yeah, I know. I know app. about the game. Yeah. yeah, I know about the game. Yeah, but uh, I'm saying like, okay, let's let's look at the history of Kim Kardashian, right? Okay, Reggie Bush stuck his dick in her. They took back that motherfucker Heisman. He had already they took won his it. Heisman, man. He didn't lose. He didn't go down here. He won that shit. He can't even go back to the school, man. <laughs> and they took his shit back, right? <laughs> he can't spend his own money on USC paraphernalia. <laughs> then who she fuck with next? Uh, then she went to um, Chris, Humphrey. Chris Humphreys. He was one of the best rebounders in the league. Like I don't even know if he's still in the league no more. I ain't. I don't even know who he is. If it went for him, <laughs> I, I know that's the dude in the NBA, Kardashian. Yeah. And then, um, who, who so, she, but then she grew her brand and brought in. Oh, Chloe. Ray J. Ray J. Ray J. Oh, was yeah. on t- Ray J. Was on TV, man. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and well, he's, you know, she started with Nick Cannon. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And But I don't know if Nick Cannon ever probably put his thing in him, man. Why you say Because he went and got Mariah Carey. Yeah. And, and he had know. that curse. Yeah. I don't know if Rick, Nick Cannon really into having sex with people of the opposite sex. <laughs> another <laughs> rumor that we won't. Shots right. fired. Yeah. <laughs> Nick Cannon. <laughs> I'm going to look into this camera. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so then now she got Kanye. Now she got Kanye. And then... You know, Kanye was a musical genius. He was, man. I mean, you know, we would, we're still debating on on Kanye, man, because I think my beautiful dark twisted fantasy was like the greatest, his greatest work. Nah, you know it what was I'm it was a good work. It wasn't like man, that thing was thriller level, man. Have you listened to yeah, it? Yeah, I, I actually went back the other day because I was debating with uh, what's up, boy, who was on the con- the podcast, Edward Bowser. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. Uh, I was telling him that it wasn't a five because you know it got five mics in the source, and I was telling him that it wasn't. It's one of the it's, albums that didn't deserve to be five mics. No, Mike, that was that that album was literally perfect, and and it it encapsulated all his previous albums while providing a new sound, a new direction for his music. Even though the new direction hadn't panned out for the fans like we wanted it to, but you know when they asked this nigga what his favorite albums were. He said Jesus in 808s. <laughs> That's the type of shit this nigga is. Like, bro, you know your your illest shit was the stuff, you know, before the tragedy with your with your parent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But so now they got Lamar older, man. Now they got Lamar. I mean, they found this man like OD'd on like every, they said every other drug. And don't forget now, see we we have left out and then, like, that they say, you know, the the biggest tragedy of all the people who ever messed with a Kardashian is, you know, they say OJ, yeah, is Chloe, it's Chloe's daddy. daddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what happened to OJ? He the first. He the first one. He the first cap uh, cap casualty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, damn, what else I was going to say? Man? I was going to make a point real quick, man. You threw oh, me off with that. Kanye's one. album, something about Kanye. Nah. Uh, 
Shit, I didn't forget. Oh, I was gonna say about um about Lamar was that he in the hospital, right? Chloe calls up the camera crew and makes sure there's a camera crew and a small entourage following her into the uh, hospital room to see this nigga. I wouldn't let her stink ass in there. You know what I'm saying? She ain't even fine, man. Mm -hmm. Like she ain't. She, is, uh, is Kim fine to you? Kim. Like, I never saw Kim without the makeup, but Chloe, like, she, Chloe is one of those people, okay, there's a category of people that I've never talked about on this podcast. Chloe Kardashian, um, Eli Manning, a bunch of, uh, it's a bunch of white people. Um, yeah, those, that was, they look I don't like, get the connection. <laughs> huh? huh? I don't get the connection. They got, they look, all look like they got a little teeny bit. Of Down syndrome, <laughs> dropped in their milk. <laughs> they look like they got a little cheated for the Down syndrome. Just a little, you know. Yeah. The the thing about Chloe is like when you when you be intimate with your lady and y'all kiss and like your forehead is touching, mm. like it looked like it'll hurt if I did that to her. Like it just felt like I'd leave with knots and like acne or some shit and a, a forehead STD or some shit just from touching her. You know, she ain't finding me, man. Uh, actually, gotcha. I mean, I went, I went touch any of them, and and now I was looking at the BET Awards last night, and uh, they um they got this new show, Mike, where they trying to hype up like the black version of um of Kardashians. It's these random black folks. I don't know where the fuck they found these niggas at, but uh, they call the Westbrooks, and they look dumb as a box of rocks, and I. I, they look like they finna do like future uh, appearances at City Gear <laughs> for a Jordan release or some shit. They ain't gonna be on no red carpet right. no time soon. But um, but the biggest casualty from the Kardashians outside of uh, uh, OJ was motherfucking gold medalist Bruce Jenner. Oh yeah, <laughs> they kill him all. Like they erased that motherfucker. From you know the what I'm saying? Of the annals of. And you, here's the thing about, you know, I've been real hesitant to bring this up on the show, Mike, but it's my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. I think that that dude went through the sex change so that he would not go to jail for uh, for that vehicular homicide. Right. Well, you and, know, like there's this, this thing in the culture where you can't say anything about uh, Caitlyn Jenner because she's beautiful and strong and brave. Come on, son. You know, she ain't beautiful. I mean, right. And, and then, right, like, I hate that term. Like, everybody ain't beautiful. But First this, of all, she ain't beautiful inside. She killed somebody. She was the dumb motherfucker sitting in the background of all the damn Kardashian shows. Like, I didn't like Bruce Jenner. I thought Bruce Jenner was dumb as a motherfucker when he was a male, man sitting in the background of the Kardashian right. shit. Like, who does that? Let their fucking daughters and they what, run around like. It, but this, and then this is how you know it was a farce, man. He ain't chopped his dick off. Mm -hmm. He's still peeing standing up. Yep. That's how you know you're bullshit. And he ain't changed his voice. Nigga sound like Cobra Commander when he yeah, was at the S. Still can't. If they start a, a Kardashian choir, he gonna be in the baritone <laughs> section. <laughs> but look, Mike, uh so uh the whole staying on the West Coast, uh the USC coach, man. That motherfucker, this, drunk than a motherfucker. This nigga calling fake punt run on second and two. He drunk, drunk as at fuck. Practice. I mean, they, he was drunk at the game. He was drunk they at the game. But though, let, he, he wouldn't let him in the huddle. Forget this though, Mike. Mm -hmm. The game that they was really like putting on in, in focus, the motherfuckers won 41 to 10. Yeah, but they said they would, <laughs> like, it might be because they wouldn't let him. They knew he was drunk. First of all, man, okay, you, you ever play football? Yeah. So how do you, like, I don't understand how do you get drunk and be drunk in at the game? Because, see, like, okay, you know, when you go to the foot, when you go play, have a football game, like, in college, it start early in the morning. You right. got riding a bus to the stadium. And then he you got, got his own you tailgate. You warming up. And then you, you know, you going out on the field and you uh, practicing. And then you got to talk to the people in the locker room. Like, he had to be drink. Like, he didn't drink. That's not drinking before the game. You drinking at the stadium, during the game, mm -hmm. and all of that. Because you can't get drunk, like, before the game and still be drunk at the game. Man, what? And then, you know, uh, I mean, dude was, dude was lit. I just want to know what he be drinking, man. 
Man, he like he, he probably got that good looking too, man. Yeah, that that old eighteen twenty six. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He got that pirate uh, <laughs> with them pirates drink. You yeah, know what I'm saying on the fucking, and shit. Yeah, that fuck might be drinking damn motherfucking drinking rum. Hell yeah, straight out of the, uh, <laughs> the barrel. <laughs> In, in the uh, in the locker room singing pirate chants. That motherfucker. Yo ho ho, a pirate like Then they, well, you know how they found out, right? Huh? You know how they found, they found out about this shit, right? Because one of the players tweeted, "Coaches at practice drunk again." Uh, <laughs> he was, you know, it was a, you know it probably was a damn dude, a black dude too, man. Yeah, man, snitching. <laughs> like, but I mean, but you know that that only make it. I mean, that just goes to show you about white privilege, man, you know, because that, that shit is real, you know. Yeah. Um, I can't see Mike Tomlin getting away with that shit. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, uh, uh, another thing is with USC, if you got beef with USC, um, don't be around like an airplane because they're going to fire you before you get off the plane. Yeah. And that's how they got that's how you got Lane Kiffin the yeah. last time. Like, and what well, was crazy, they fired Lane Kiffin in front of this dude, Sarkeesian. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so now they got him the same way. So that means it was somebody waiting in the wings finna be the coach. Yeah. He drunk, too. <laughs> <laughs> he probably he probably on that. Uh, fire that motherfucker. He on that poppy field shit yeah. from, from Afghanistan. Hell, yeah. Man, that's crazy, Mike. But look, man, before we close out, dog, Got to talk about motherfucking DraftKings and FanDuel, Mike. Hey, can you turn on your TV and not see a commercial for them? Hey, I can't go to sleep. I woke I, up. I woke up the other day. They said my snores was was sponsored by FanDuel. Yeah. One one week, uh, <laughs> fantasy football signed up today. Yeah. I'm like hell. Yeah. Nah, if you put the, the the cold be stuck snores in, you get ten dollars off your you first. <laughs> I'm you know, telling you, son. You know, I ain't gonna lie, man. Uh, I first found out. Well, I first paid attention to it. Like, you know, we man, as soon as the season started, that shit was everywhere. Like, yeah, man. But I didn't really know what it was till Glenwood was telling me about it. I see. I still have. I've never gone on the site, but somebody who works with somebody who works for one of the organ publications that I work for, mm. they did. A like not an expose, but they just tried. They did an article where they just tried it out for a week, mm-hmm. and they say if you got any kind of gambling kind of addiction or like even this ain't what you want, son. He said don't fuck with that shit. Like because this how they was getting away with it. Mike was that like okay, so you would think that I right, me and you in the league, mm-hmm. I put down twenty dollars. I got a five team like mm-hmm. this team itself. You know what I'm saying? It may be one my week. Mm-hmm. I might have Andy Dalton. Mm-hmm. and But I'm playing against a guy that got Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. And so Tom Brady uh, go for, let's say he go for like 20 points. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Andy Dalton goes for, let's say he go for 23 points. Mm-hmm. The way they was getting away with it was there was a, an assigned value to Tom Brady right. where he might be worth $1,000. Whereas your your uh your Andy Dalton is only gonna break even with what you put in. Right. So that's how they was pimping the system. Yeah, but see the reason the way they was the 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 big scandal of the shit is that so they was cause it's people who actually make their living playing playing that fantasy football. Yeah, playing yeah. that playing that well, fantasy, fantasy sports. Playing the yeah. fantasy sports, right? So they do a lot. I mean, some of them are math geniuses who go and do research all week and do permutations and damn algorithms on the who, who they should pick and what they do historically against this team and this de- kind of defense and this coach and all of that shit. Mm-hmm. So what the people were doing was, like, the people who work at FanDuel would get the research and they know, like, this person is good. He does a lot of research. So they take their lineups. At, from FanDuel and, and go play them on with DraftKings. They'll, say, they'll make them a team but with DraftKings. But then they also was giving away what the value, what the point yeah. totals yeah. were. And so the damn CEO of FanDuel came back with 350000 yeah. a week. Yeah. Ain't Playing it on shit? another site. Playing it on another site. Hey, and they, you, that's your rival company. That's like. That's but like, see, uh, this is the point. This is the thing, what, right? That you got to stay woke on. When that shit broke, you know who was the public relations person 
that apologized for all of that shit? Who? Remember about six months ago, there was this white girl and she was in public relations and she got on the flight to South Africa. And right before she got on, she tweeted. Oh, <laughs> that was the girl. Going to Africa. Hope I don't get AIDS. AIDS, <laughs> right? <laughs> Just kidding. I'm white. And then got on the flight and it blew up. And by the time she landed, they fired Yeah, her. I remember she was, that. She's the public relations person for DraftKings now. Get the fuck out <laughs> yeah. of here. Yeah. So that's who was explaining it to everybody. Hell to the no, no. <laughs> oh, man. To the no, no, no. This world is, is so crazy that it seems like a fucking dream sometimes, man. Man. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, man. Because I, I, I remember that shit vividly. Yeah. Damn, so that was old girl. Yeah. So did she get to keep the money? Oh, did she give it back? No, she, I don't think she was. Oh, she, 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 she was a public relations person because she, she got fired from her last job. That she, uh, she just got the job at DraftKings. Right. Damn, man, that's a cold game. Right here, dog. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and man, Negroes are not equipped for that shit. They not, man. Like that's some that's some next level shit, man. Like we too scared to do some shit like that, man. You know, but um, you know, it's uh, it's a it's a crazy world. <laughs> here it is. <laughs> here the PR guru who posted racist tweet surfaces in fantasy sports. <laughs> <laughs> Justine Sacco. Yeah. Man, Justine, come on, man. You come to the State Woke Show, I got something for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You could draft like, But look my at kid. her, man. Like, every time I look at her, she look like she fuck with black dudes. Any white girl with that blonde streak. Yeah, yeah. They she got, she got that joker mouth, though. Yeah. Is that real? Just one thin thing and yeah. a little bit of pink on the bottom. Do you have any scars? <laughs> <laughs> Just Google Justine Sacco. And you'll see what we're talking about. Oh, man. Um, uh, that's what's up, man. What you got going on this weekend? Nothing, man. I don't know. I'm just. I might just be here. I don't know. I might be going to this Leaf Festival if I can get some tickets. A, a what festival? Leaf, well, it's a festival called Leaf. They have this huge poetry slam. But the only way you can compete in a poetry slam is it's free to get in, except you have to have tickets to the festival. But the festival is so popular that they sell out real early. So I'm trying to score some tickets. If not, I'll be here. Um, you know, I don't think I have anything coming up for the next couple of weeks, man. I'm tired of traveling kind of on the road, but uh, the so Aniston and um, Aniston on November 10th, and then Atlanta for a charity show on November 19th. I think that's I don't know. I think you know, check the website, man. That would that would man. I'm uh, uh, I'm headed to Nashville this weekend. My, What's uh, going on there? The Dolphins playing the Titans. Oh, okay. And I am I am loyal to a tremendous fault. I I love that team. That, yeah, man. My squad, I, Mike. You know, um, we got, there's we got a new. there's a sale going on of uh, of um, Southwest Airlines. So I'm I'm thinking about dropping in right after the show and picking up some tickets for tap to Tampa because the Cowboys play them. Yeah, you know that, and they play in Miami too. Yeah, and what well, you talking about? The Cowboys. You talking about playing uh, the Bucks? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That should be a good game, man. Yeah, man. Game. I, uh, I'm just, I was, I was supposed to go see them in New Orleans two weeks last week, but I yeah. was so tired, man. And then I had to go to DC. I was like, fuck that. You know, we, uh, we got a new coach now. They, they finally fired Joe Philbin. Yeah. And I was so happy. Y'all got Steve Sarkeesian, right? No, <laughs> no, man. We got this dude. He, have you been watching uh, South Park this this season? Man, I saw the greatest episode of South Park I believe ever. Which one? Written. <laughs> PC Principal. Pete. That's what I was about to say. He looked just like PC. Our oh new my, coach. Look, if you haven't watched the episode, the first, just watch the first two. It's the first two episodes. You of the PC, season. bro. You, <laughs> wait, but you know what? The next episode, like, so South Park doing this continuity thing mm. where, you know, they carry on the first yeah. episode to the second. Man, the second one was even funny. That's what I'm saying. This, I first watched the first two. Oh, episodes. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah the yeah. second episode was funny. It's funny. <laughs> but if you haven't watched it, man, that's the, to me, that's the height of political satire. Man, I mean, South Park just gets it right. Right. You know what I mean? I oh, mean. Let me tell you, but I want to say one thing that's warmed my soul that I'm so happy to see that? is that all of the p black folks running away from Chip Kelly saying that he was racist, that he's failing now. 
Like yeah. I, I, every time I see the Eagles lose, it warms my heart. But you know, is you know why I can't like go with you on that? What is because we are using Chip Kelly's offense and we lose it too. <laughs> <laughs> Our success is tied to him. But hey, they were right though. Yeah. I mean, you don't just you don't have like a great running back. And just let them go. For and I'm wondering great. why every like to me, if everybody say you racist, you might be. He racist. got to be like real racist. Yeah, he got to be doing. But some see, shit. white people a lot of times, man, they don't know what racism is. They think racism is I hate black people, mm-hmm. but they don't understand that that's not just like you can be racist and you think you're not racist. Right. They don't understand that. Like I used to work for a, a for a dude who went to a private school. Mm. And he only people he hired were people from that private school. Right. right? You know, most of the people he hired. Well, the, the private school was an all white school. Now you you couldn't tell him that he hated white black people because he was he probably didn't hate white black people, but his hiring practices were racist because they leaned towards giving white people an advantage because they went to that school mm-hmm. with black people. Anyway. Fuck Stephen A. Smith one more time. Yeah, fuck Stephen A. Fuck Chip Kelly. Fuck uh, them white dudes you talking about. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's crazy, man. Because and pray for Raven Simone, man. Man, we can't pray for her, man. She gone, Mike. Uh, man, we'll trade her to white people for to get Kanye people, back. White people won't even take her. They, and they going to keep Even if we throw Stephen A. Smith in. See, they already got Stephen A. Smith. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. They, we just think, they just think, they just pretending that he on our side. We know where he on your yeah. side. Yeah. Hey, another uh, thing I'm going to be doing in the next couple of weeks, man, I'm going to be flying out to Hawaii. Hawaii got this uh, mushroom out there, Mike, that if women smell it, they have an instant orgasm. So I got to go out there and get some of those. And then just nah, put man, it under I think, the bed. Nah, I was going to say something real bad. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, you know, like, they, did you hear about the, the, the little mushroom that they found? Mm-mm. All right, so the weird shit about it is they had uh, they had 16 white women on standby to do a, a study of the smells. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, like, so they just got these women just camped out in the basement of some shit. And they sniffing mushrooms. Like, are they just trying different plants to see if they orgasm? But it's this, it's this, uh, <laughs> I fungus. believe, uh, that's a, <laughs> is this going to be revealed as a practical joke? Like, no, it's, it's real talk. Like, my, the head of my penis is mushroom shaped. It'd be like, no, nah, <laughs> you got to get real close and smell it. No, closer, closer. <laughs> no, but get this. Like, this will make it crazy. Like, all the men that smelled it, mm-hmm. they all, like, say it smell like horse shit. But women smell it. And they start nothing. So I'm going to go to Hawaii and get some of those and bring that back and see what my what my results going to be. <laughs> but that's what's up, man. Let's shoot. All right, man. We're going to get out of here, dog. Yeah, man. Y'all stay woke, man. Stay woke. Stay woke. What we got to say ain't no joke. Peace. No joke.